We're talking today about how to protect your trees on the job site. We're here at the West 10th job site and I've got my friend Don Gardner. Don is a consulting arborist. He actually won Texas Arborist of the Year a couple years ago. And Don, I know you worked with my team on this project prior to breaking ground to develop a tree protection plan, especially for this tree behind us. Tell us a little bit about this tree, Don. Well, <clears throat> Matt, this is a live oak. It's probably 250 years old, maybe a little older. It's also uh, registered with the city of Austin when we used to do those kind of things. Uh, th this, is, uh, this is probably one of the biggest, uh, finest uh, live oaks in uh, all of Central Texas. That's a beautiful tree. It is. Don, tell me about the plan that you put together for us here to make sure this tree not only survived construction, but thrives after we're gone. Matt, on this particular site, what we were really trying to do was protect the, the root system of the tree from both being cut and compacted. Okay. We were fortunate in this particular instance because there was not going to be no cutting on this side of, of the construction. So that, that was fortunate. So here we're really trying to protect from compaction. So what we've done is we put the tree protection fence, which is always a good idea. And anytime you can protect the root system with a fence, that's the best thing to yeah, do. Just keep yeah. all activity out of there. But with this fence, what we did was we put it as far from the tree trunk as we could to allow for some construction and work that has to be done on the other side of the fence. And we have completely mulched on the other side of the fence all the area right up to the building so there's no small equipment or foot traffic that can mess around this tree uh, and cause any kind of compaction because of the mulch layer and the protection fence. Matt, different people say different things, but where you're gonna have some construction traffic, both small equipment like a, 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 a bobcat or a lot of foot traffic, you, you need to be over four inches. Okay. Uh, out here in the protected area where there's not gonna be any kind of construction impact of any kind, four inches is fine. In, inside where you know you're gonna have traffic, it's probably uh, good to go up to six inches. And so that mulch is acting as kind of a spring layer, right? So that we're not uh, pushing the air out of that root zone, yeah, is that right? So the goal is to not compact the soil. And so compacting means pushing the air out. Mm -hmm. And if you put a good mulch layer on it, you just never quite get down to that soil to compact it. That mulch actually just transfers all of that and holds it right in itself. Yeah, that's great. Good deal. Don, tell me about the drip line and what that means. Well, so if we're looking at this tree, Matt, what drip line means is from the outside edge of the branches all the way around the outside edge of so the that branches. giant canopy. The giant canopy. And drip line is a phrase that comes from uh, when it rains lightly, water just rolls off the top of the tree and drips off the outside edges. And you get a little bit more water around the tree on the outside edges of the drip line. That's where a lot of roots are are found too, at the, where the tree gets a little extra moisture. Mm. But it's really important to think about drip line when you're doing construction because it's the root system that you're trying to protect. Mm -hmm. And what we've learned, if you protect the root system that's inside the drip line, between the outside of the, the tree and the trunk, you, you will have protected that tree and the tree is gonna do fine. Yeah. So protecting the root system is really important, both whether you're gonna be really trafficking a lot on that root system or whether you're gonna be cutting into the root system. You know, we can't see the root system. So we I often just try to be in a state of denial about it. But if you're trying to protect the tree in a construction scenario, it's the root system that you're trying to protect. Got it. And then Don, during construction, what do I need to know about watering and fertilizing over these next 12 months we're gonna be working on this project? Matthew, I like for people to put organic compost against the soil before you put your mulch on. Okay. That organic fertilizer, organic compost is the fertilizer. It's the tree food for the tree. Uh, organic fertilizer, organic compost, is all the essential elements and minerals that trees need. And then you come back on with your mulch layer, which is that really the protection layer. Yeah, so you're yeah. feeding the trees during construction and you're protecting the root system. And if you go dry long enough or hot long enough, it's really critical to water any tree, but especially during construction. You know, water also helps decompact trees. So that's another reason to water mm. them, even when it's not necessarily so dry. Yeah. But in the winter, I would say uh, about once a month, with about a hose-in sprinkler, about an hour per sprinkler location. In the summer, I would say it's twice a month, maybe two hours per sprinkler location. You've got to get that water about six inches down in the soil to really help a tree. Okay, Don, super helpful. 
Last thing that I want to advise people on is find the Don Gardner in your area. There's consulting arborists all over the U.S., and you really want to get a Don involved prior to the truck showing up, right, Don? Because once once we're in construction, a lot of the damage can be done to this tree already. Well, and Matthew, here what happened was that uh, your your fellows uh, contacted me before you started any work. Said, you know, we need it. Uh, tree protection plan for these trees. Mm -hmm. uh, I came over, did my work, wrote a tree protection plan for you, and so we have a plan. And if that plan is implemented in any kind of construction scenario, you're gonna protect and preserve your trees. That's fantastic. And this 250 year old tree behind us, how much life does this one still have? Oh, there is no telling how long this tree is gonna live. I, I would say, and I won't be around here for you to prove this on me, <laughs> I'd say another 100 years. <laughs> That's fantastic. Don, thank you so much. Hey, for more on this topic, visit my blog at mattreisinger.com. Otherwise, I'd love to have you follow me on Twitter and Instagram and hit that subscribe button below. We'll see you soon.